So it seems to me every project needs some constraints at some point or else it can't move forward. And finding this in the uh, dumpster has prompted me, where'd I even put it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The uh, setting circle. Because these needed to have some circuitry. Um, maybe it'll be now be an ESP32. It'll probably be an ESP32. So these are some example form factors of batteries that you could power the circuit off of. Whereas there's some 18650 in here. So it's a matter of figuring out what fits and uh, going from there. So that looks kind of nice in terms of the layout. You can have some power coming in here for charging. Um, display. way too big. That's more like it, but given how nice these displays are, I, I don't think that's going to be a winner. probably design for a uh, different board. I have to machine a cutout for the USB. that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Okay, what was I doing here? I think I was testing uh, inverting Schmidt triggers for debouncing this thing. And I think I was testing different displays to see... Well, I was hoping I was going to test different displays to see what I could... <clears throat> connect up to, yeah, what was this, uh, yeah, I don't think that made any difference, this was an 8266 breakout board, <clears throat> I've got a couple of these because of that, um, I think I started on another ESP8266 breakout board. I don't know why I did that. Man, I have got to start making notes. I really do. I think this is a ESP breakout board too. Started on that. Few more of these. Yeah, well, it's definitely an ESP32. And then I was worried about heat sinking on a power supply. Here's another rotary encoder. Here's another one of these. Yeah, power supply. I think I needed a battery too, and I was gonna do something with that. There was a whole whack of bat. Yeah, you know what? I think I have to start again. <laughs> Schmidt trigger testing for uh, Schmidt trigger inputs for debouncing the switch. That's what this was. I was working on a dev board 
um, holster with um, reset and power. Um, that's what this was. Don't know why it doesn't want to plug in, but in any event, oh yeah, it does. It's just stiff as as stiff. So yeah, um, got to do some finish some work on this. Um, power needs to go here, and then reset pins. But, but I've also got these guys here, so I don't know. Maybe I don't even have to deal with any of those. And then these are going to be some inputs to something. I'm not sure. I forget what the heck I was doing. But anyways, yeah, that's next steps. Okay, so we have the uh, this powered up from USB, so that's working. Now let's power it up from the uh, voltage regulator and see if that's working. Ground is outside. 3.5 uh, volt is inside. And there we go. Does that reset it? Looks like it does. All right. So this little carrier is working and now I can break out all of the pins onto the breadboard and I can power it from here. Um, so I'm gonna hook up this power supply. No, I'll power through this board to the breadboard. All right, so that uh, took a little longer than I wanted, but here is what the deal is. The ESP32 module that I'm using has SPI on, so uh, serial data and serial clock are on pins 42 and 39, which correspond to GPI, uh, IO22 and IO21. So um, on these little um, OLED displays, you um, you have uh, serial data, serial clock, VCC, ground. You got VCC, ground, and so I've got ground. Um, VCC is over here, ground is here, and then I've got serial data, serial clock. And uh, yeah, works just fine with the uh, example code, so we have that part working. Now, let's try it with another display. I bet you we're not going to get the uh, same thing if I just pop this out. Okay, so that's a little bit crazy, I think, because on the back of these guys, I don't know if it says the I squared C address should be 78 or 7A, but um, in my code, I've got it running at the I squared C address is 3C, just like for the little guy, and it runs. So, yeah, I don't know what the heck's going on there, but at least it's working. So that's one thing. So, yeah, actually, I think that display um, is an appropriate size. But we'll have to see what sort of... No, I think that's an appropriate size, just to, um, you know say what the IP address is, um, to print out the azimuth and altitude um, of our encoders. So yeah, that's a step in the right direction. And so these are blue, but I have to be careful because they've got a different pinout than the, um, than the, uh, than the other ones. So yeah, I have to be a little careful with that. Both of these work. Hmm, looks like it. Okay. So that's white versus... Yeah, and that's in blue. So now um, that we've got uh, get a new branch of code going. So I wish there was a git commit minus m this mess here. Remember everything about it, because oh man, like how how do you recreate this? Oh my gosh. Um, 
there isn't a command like that. So, anyways, in lieu of that, let's try and make some notes. Okay, so we've got our little um, OLED. We will note that the I squ I squared C I I C address select has two options: OX78 and OX7A. Neither of these work, but 3C does. So that's the address of the OLED, and it's on the um, the uh, I squared C bus. So pins, what is that? 21, um, 22 are um, serial data and serial clock. Okay, we've got ground going to our enco encoder here. Realistically, I should probably tie all the grounds to a star, and I will when I actually build it, but anyways. We also have um, pin 1 and pin 3 of the encoders going to pins 4 and pin 0, um, IO4 and IO0, which is GPIO4 and GPIO0. Um, that is going to our rotary part of the encoder. And we also have the push button, um, which goes off into here, which is a Schmidt trigger um, buffered with, uh, with a RC filter. That's a lot of pins to use for a rotary encoder, a single rotary encoder. I should, I could probably figure out how to do that in um, a pair of uh, transistors or something like that. Put a, figure out a different way to do the Schmidt trigger, but eh, it's working right now, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with it. I, I shouldn't be too embarrassed to say this, but. Um, just learning. Anyways, um, somehow this was getting 1.3 volts out of not having it connected to power. I don't know how it was getting that, but sure enough it was getting that, but anyways, that's another story for another day. Um, wait, why are you still lit? Let's reboot you. Huh. I had not noticed that. This guy is supposed to be blinking. Did I clobber this? Uh, I'll have to figure that out. Um, but anyways, okay, ground, or sorry, 3.3 .3 goes to 3.3. No. Oh, right, 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 right. This went through its setup, and now it can blink. Fair enough. Fair enough. Because that happens in Maine. All right, so that's one way of looking at it. All right, now, all this mess over here, I have not tried to um, connect the rotary encoders to that. That's the next step. But so far, what have I got working? I have got um, the um, UI rotary encoder working uh, with both a push button and rotation. Now, each detent is four steps on the encoder, so I'll have to um, take that into account when I write code. Um, I've got the OLED working, I've got the OLED working, and so um, I can start working on UI for that. And then the next step is to plug the, um, the rotary encoders into here and figure and load up the uh, Zo Zoetrope Labs library and work on getting that running. But that is the progress so far, and oh my gosh. At least it's running. Big sigh.